What's up world? Michael EJ here, coming to you with another video in the field of finance, business, and life. Now today's video is the end of the month. You know what that means? My end of the month momentum stock picks. That's right. Some stock you can hold on to just for a couple of weeks or months, sometimes longer, and you expect to see some pretty good gains. Now, we're unsure about where the market is going. I mean, in some ways, it shows characteristics of a very good market in terms of the volatility, very low volatility out there. No drawdowns have happened in the longest time. At the same time, though, more and more investors are piling into quality stocks. What that usually means is people are expecting some bad things to happen. Either they're right around the corner or they're happening as we speak. So we need to kind of play both sides here. We need to have both some a pick for a very good environment, things continue to move on with no volatility, and maybe the, the market will start to take a little bit more risk. Oh, you know, also another pick for when the things hit the fan. You know, things get really rocky, uh, very high returns on capital will be very important, and a stock that can kind of do a little bit of both. That kind of works in a neutral environment. So those are the kind of three stocks I'll be presenting. So let's get started with that. First, ticker, ACLS, Excellus Technologies Incorporated. Now, I must admit, I do not fully understand their business, but that's not gonna hold me back from investing in them. Let me explain. The company develops and makes ion implanters that semiconductor manufacturers use to insert ions into silicon wafers to change their conductive properties. That's a lot. Um, they manufacture its ion implementation devices in-house at its plant in Beverly, Massachusetts. In addition to equipment, it offers aftermarket service and support, including spare parts, equipment upgrades, maintenance, and training. While the company sells its products around the world, about the two-thirds of its sales are accounted for in the United States. Now, I'm not 100% sure about the ion implementation business, but what I am sure about is they don't really have any competition. They are truly in a niche market. There are only one real competitor that's out there that does pretty much the same thing, and they're in Japan. All their sales are coming from that Asia area. So they're kind of dominating this niche market. And I mean, the fundamentals are bearing it out. Really good sales growth that came above expectations, growth from all their products, and one thing for me that I really like is they have over 340 active patents with another 200 pending. That's a, that's a lot of intellectual property, a lot of horsepower to fight off competition. And they're increasing forward guidance. And most importantly, institutional ownership is increasing. More and more institutional owners are getting to this stock. And that will really creates the momentum for a lot of these stocks. Institutional ownership needs to be increasing. Valuation-wise, I see them highly undervalued, mainly because of growth prospects and being able to fight off competition. Price of sales is about three times, a little bit high, but in this market, we'll take it. And I will say this is a really good buy. Really good buy, especially for a good environment. Because right now, their return on invested capital is about single digits, mid-single digits, and it just jumped from, from last fiscal year to trailing 12 months. Now it's approaching and going above that 10% double digit mark. And that's what I mean by taking the risk on a relative basis. Good stock to hold, not just for the short term, but maybe the long term, maybe a couple of months, maybe a year or two, we'll see. Now, this is for a good environment. For a bad environment, we don't need jumps in return on this capital. We need solid, very high investment capital, return investment capital. And that's where ACN comes in, which is Accenture, the consulting company. Now Accenture, first of all, is the world's largest consulting firm. I didn't know that. Um, and they offer a portfolio of management consulting, technology, and business process outsourcing services to some of the top companies and government organizations in the world. 
The corporate clients span a broad spectrum of industries and include more than three quarters of the Fortune 500. You're dealing with a lot of big time timers here. Um, clients use Accenture's services to enter new markets, increase revenue in existing markets, improve operational performance, and deliver new products to market. I mean, they do it all. Now, their main two businesses, major consulting, technology, consulting, out, outsourcing certain things. It's mainly major consulting and technology services. That's kind of their, their kind of stick. That's their two things. Now on both sides, there's any competition. I mean, major consulting, they might be considered a second tier firm behind the McKinsey's, Bain's, BCG's of the world. And on the technology side, you, you're competing in some ways with like the Dells and the Oracles, Microsoft, Maybe not directly, but in some way you were competing with them. But they're really the only company that does both. And they kind of complement each other. You can improve operational performance by bringing in some technology that you're already working on. I mean, that's a competitive advantage that leads to no true competition for Accenture. And being a consulting firm, they're pretty capital light. Not a lot of high cap X, not a lot of high capital investment going on, which means any sale is going to come pretty close to free cash flow. It's just going to flow right in. Now, because I'm using, speaking of that, because I'm using a DCL, of course they're undervalued. I mean, they look amazing. Why? Because they just have high free cash flow margins. I will also mention that they have a price to sales ratio of only two times, really good in this market, and they have a, a decent shareholder yield. They're buying back shares and they're paying dividends. Shareholder yields around 4%. That's really good. Now, this is definitely a company for bad times, but hey, they're increasing institutional ownership too, so might as well ride with them. And not just ride with them, ride with them for a while. Not just a month or two. Hold on to them for a year. This is a company I have very high confidence in. Now, both ACLS and ACN, I suggest you hold on for a while. This next one, Get in for a month, get out. Because it's not as pretty of a scene. But it's the best company that could probably work in either environment. Flexible to work in either a really good environment or a bad environment. And that is ABMD, Abiomed, about a $9 billion market cap. Now, they really are in giving your heart a rest. Let me explain. The medical device maker has developed a range of cardiac assist devices and is developing a self-contained artificial heart. Its impeller micro heart pumps can temporarily take over blood circulation during surgery. They also have another product, its AB5000 ventricular assist device, temporarily, temporarily takes over the heart's pumping function and improves circulatory, uh, improves blood flow in patients with acute heart failure, thus allowing their hearts to rest and recover. It's definitely a mouthful, but it's definitely something to look at. Definitely in healthcare. Uh, and I like the company because it's a little bit different. My first two picks, I mean, they're kind of in technology. You can't depend on technology for everything, so I'm going to diversify a little bit in healthcare. And I mean, they have some good things going for them. I mean, they're growing in international markets using a lot of their intellectual property. Um, they, they have already high double digit return on invested capital and it's growing, which is the key. Their number one product, that Impella that I mentioned, it's gaining more and more exposure and growing institutional ownership. Now, they're highly overvalued. And I feel like part of that is, A, they have a little bit of debt, not a lot, but a little bit, but B, more importantly, because they have high growth prospects, everybody's piled in. And price of sales is extremely high at 13 times. I mean, that is ridiculous. That is scary. But if people are buying, you might as well ride the wave up and get out before it all comes crashing down. So this is definitely good, especially for diversification purposes and something that can work in either a good or a bad environment. They, I still expect them to do well. So that's all I have for you today. Guys, we do not know where the market is going. I mean, in some ways, things look like it can continue to ride up for the next year or two. Other ways, it looks like it just fall off the cliff tomorrow. So you best prepare yourself.
yourself for having a pick for both the good times, the bad times, and more so in the middle, and have the flexibility in your picks to just adapt and adjust. That's all I have for you today. Michael EJ here, bringing you different ideas in finance, business, and life. Always stay tuned until the next one comes. Until the next time, peace.